here is the Ford Adreno coil tester. And I will put coil in and go ahead and take it through some tests. First test is just a single fire. You can do this a couple times. If I hold it in for longer than a second, we do 50 tests. This, the mean time is 2.04 milliseconds. This is a range from 1.83 to 2.17 milliseconds with standard deviation of 0 0.01. The dwell for that range would be 5.1 degrees. Maximum current was 5.03. And uh, the RPM that we had was 2,500 with zero misfires. And then finally we have another test. And after you hold it in for six seconds or longer, it gives a bunch 50 tests, also done at 2500 RPM. And this uh, gives just an average of those. If we wanted to go slower on the second test, we can move our potentiometer, hold it in for longer than one second. Oops, we did that test. That test does not change. It's the multi-fire test. I wasn't holding it tight, so we had five misfires. But notice it went down to 2100. So, that's a good coil. Let's put one that's not so good in here. See what it looks like. So there, you have a lower time, standard deviation and such. It looks okay, but if you do a single fire test, you start to see some issues there. Now we'll do the um, multi-fire for a long time. That's one example. Here's another example of a coil. That's, this is what a double spark looks like. And if we want to do 50 tests of that, you can kind of see what happens. So, that shows you now. Let's say we want to tune a coil. Let's see where this one's at. Well, the current's a little low, and the firing uh, time is a little long. So, let's see if I can figure out what to do. I have my little bar here. I'm going to bend this. I'll make it a little bit tighter. See what happens. Well, I raised the current up, but the time to fire stayed the same. So, maybe I'll go ahead and turn this down and see if that does anything. Oh, look at that. Brings that down a little bit. It's kind of all over the place, so let's see where it is. So that's a 2100 RPM. I'll move the RPM back up. Uh, standard deviation is 0.37. That's pretty high. So I'd just say this coil probably has some other problems. kind of see double spark in there, perhaps. I'll pull this down a little bit more. Just doesn't look like a very good coil. So we probably need to look at what else is going on here. Something's making it double fire. one more time. Look at that. We got double firing. Double firing and not enough current. So I think I'll add a little current in here by tightening the spring. Let's 
see. Well, I made it much longer. But I'm turning this down. See what that does. There's a blue spark in it. I might change the capacitor in this. Oh, well, look, it's labeled double spark. Now, this is the original capacitor. I think I'll leave this one as my double sparking. Problem child. Let's look. This one here, I do have my capacitor in it, so. Let's see what happens with this one. Look like we had double spark at the beginning. That's what happens when we run it. Well, that's pretty low standard deviation. Time is a little a bit less than two milliseconds, but it's pretty darn close. And let's just hold this in and see what we get here. I don't know, I think that's pretty good. That's our second coil, so let's see what we have going for the third coil. That one's a little bit low, isn't it? So, time to fire. Well, if we, 4.6 amps. If we make it a little bit higher. That one shows an average of two milliseconds. Let's hold this in and just do that test here. That actually looks pretty good. Okay, so now fourth coil in. Wow. <clears throat> low current and a little bit low firing time. I'll do that a couple times. Yeah, I'm just going to increase the spring tension just a tiny bit. Let's see what... Ooh, I thought I did a tiny bit. Let's see where we're at. Looks pretty good. Well, I'm going to say that's good enough.